Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Church of St. Peter. If you're new to the parish, please join us for new parishioner orientation at 1045 a.m. this Sunday in new conference room B. The June Holy Hour for Vocations is being held here on June 12th at 7 p.m. Please come and pray for vocations in our archdiocese. The big sale is coming June 21st through 23rd. This is a great opportunity to support our youth and faith formation programs. Please see the bulletin for ways you can help. More adorers are needed for our Perpetual Adoration Chapel. Please check the bulletin for a list of open hours. Spending time in adoration is a beautiful gift to our Lord. Out of respect for the Mass, please silence all cell phones. Thank you. Today we celebrate Corpus Christi. The Mass intention today is for Alfred Elizabeth. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 945, I Am the Bread of Life, verses 1 and 4, number 945. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this most sacred day, honoring the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, 
passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off and entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. In hundreds of towns and villages throughout the world, people are going to the streets. Why? Our brothers and sisters are walking the streets of the world in a solemn procession of Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. Actually, in most of the world, this celebration took uh, place this past Thursday. But here in the United States of America, we have moved this most important of solemnities to Sunday. And one of the reasons why the bishops asked permission to move Corpus Christi to the Sunday following the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity 
or so that more Catholics in the United States could celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. The sad reality is that over two-thirds, two-thirds of all Catholics in the United States do not understand what the Eucharist is. Many Catholics in our country think of the Eucharist as being merely a symbol. Some think of it as a symbol of our fellowship with one another, while others see it as a mere symbol of Christ's presence. This couldn't be further from the truth. It could be no further from the truth. A symbol just simply points to a reality, but it's not the reality itself. As you're driving down the interstate on 35 and you see the sign for Forest Lake, that sign is a symbol. It's not the actual reality of Forest Lake. The town is much further away from the interstate. The Paschal Feast that they celebrated in the Old Testament, the sprinkling of blood of animals in the Old Testament, did not really take away the sins of the world, but pointed to a further reality, Christ who is to come, who is the one to take away the sins of the world. As Catholics, we know, or we should know, that Christ is not just symbolically present in the Eucharist. Rather, he is truly, really present that's what we believe as Catholics, that he is really, truly present. The Catechism of the Catholic Church puts it this way. In the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore the whole Christ, is truly, really, and substantially contained. But it's most fitting that we give adoration to the Eucharist. Clearly, the Church wants us to think about receiving the Eucharist as well, as we celebrate today this beautiful solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. We are called to receive the food of the Eucharist continually, not because God's gift is limited, God is not limited in what he can do, but rather because our capacity to receive God is limited. Our coming constantly or continually to Holy Communion reminds us of our dependence upon God. The Eucharist is the non-bloody representation of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. What he did for us at Calvary on Good Friday is represented here on this very altar in an unbloody way. It's what saves us from our sins, and it offers us that gift of eternal life. Those who come in frequently to the Lord's altar are not at all, are depriving themselves of this very food that they need to nourish their divine life with, with that grace that we received at our very baptism. Likewise, reception of the Eucharist is not purely a private affair, as too many Catholics today believe. This is expressed in several ways liturgically, especially as we receive the Eucharist. And because of this, the church has laid down some regulations that we need to follow in regard to the reception of our Lord in Holy Communion. We are required as Catholics to fast at least one hour before receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. This means the exclusion of all food or drink except for water or medicines before receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. No chewing gum, no candy. That's why we don't have beverage holders here in our pews. That's why we don't have a beverage dispenser back in our gathering space. 
because we're called to offer a small sacrifice one hour before receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. How do we receive? First, as we approach the Eucharist, we're supposed to make a common gesture of reverence to the Eucharist. The bishops in the United States have decided that in this country, the common gesture is to make a bow of our head before receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. And then after the priest or the extraordinary minister of, of communion has said the body or blood of Christ, we're to respond with a definitive amen. We don't respond with a thank you. We're not thanking the extraordinary minister or the priest who gives us communion. We should give thanks to Almighty God. But instead, we respond with a definitive amen. It's a statement of faith. That amen means I truly believe that this is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And that is why we do not have in intercommunion with other denominations as well. For non-Catholics who come to our parish, they are welcome to come. They're welcome to come forward in the communion line, but to cross their hands across their chest to receive a blessing. And as we as Catholics go to other churches for weddings, for funerals, we too are not to receive Holy Communion. Why is that? Because when we say that word, amen, it is an ascent of the faith that we believe in. When we say amen here in this church, we're saying we truly believe that that is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, and we believe all the truths that the Holy Catholic Church teaches. To have someone from a different faith come forward and to make them say that words would be an affront to their faith. And the same is true when we go to other denominations. That's why we do not have intercommunion, because there is a difference in belief in the things that we believe in. We then should reverently receive Holy Communion. It saddens so many of us priests to see so many who come up almost kind of nonchalantly, not even thinking about what it truly is that we are about to receive. We are to show respect for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So many come forward with dirty hands, the phone numbers with their boyfriends or girlfriends from the night before. Is that an appropriate throne? A place for our Lord to rest? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, resting on dirty hands? If we receive on the tongue, we are to extend our tongue out. And the church has given universal permission for, yes, for us to receive communion in the hand as well. But to do it reverently, to stop and think who it is that we truly are receiving. As with ordinary food, our capacity to benefit from nourishment, it contains and depends on our physical condition. If our health is poor, if we're having stomach issues, it's hard for us to take ordinary food. In fact, our body normally doesn't even benefit from it when our stomachs are sick. The same is true with Holy Communion. If our state of our soul is not in the state of grace, if we knowingly find ourselves in the state of grave or mortal sin, we are to refrain from receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. 
We are to go to the sacrament of confession to receive our Lord's mercy first, and then to come forward to this altar to receive our Lord in Holy Communion. We should come to receive the Eucharist with the words of the centurion still on our lips, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. We should approach Holy Communion seeking from God not a reward, but rather his mercy. If we fulfill these conditions for worthy reception of Holy Communion, then the words of Jesus can be fulfilled. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this beautiful feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we too receive our Lord worthily with reverence and respect. May we stop and think what it is we receive and who we become as we receive our Lord at this altar today and every time we come forward for Holy Communion. What a beautiful gift our Lord has given to us. May we cherish it and receive it with reverence as well. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the love that God has for us, let us turn to him in prayer. For the whole church, that our faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist would be strengthened and move us to love the Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of nations, especially of nations experiencing economic and political turmoil and crisis, that they would humbly open themselves up to any new possibilities and ways of living so as to wisely guide their countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for Eucharistic adoration at this parish to grow, and that more and more people would sign up for hours of adoration, as well as make visits to the Blessed Sacrament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a return to the Sacrament of Reconciliation, that God's people may approach Holy Communion free of sin and prepared for the divine intimacy of contact with the living Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young people preparing to go to Vacation Bible School and Extreme Faith Camp, that their hearts would be open and docile to the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who are sick and suffering, especially Father Elan Corteau, Margaret Sheldon, Larry Lindeberg, Daniel Gessner, and Marjean Jabe, that the Lord may console and guide them and bestow healing graces upon them and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our dear departed ones, especially Fritz Swanberg, Joseph Murray, and Rose Onken, that they may soon be admitted into the joys of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, out of your great love for us, you sent your Son who gave his body and blood to save us. We pray that we would receive his body and blood in this Mass worthily and with faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a second, a reminder that there's a second collection today for special parish and school maintenance needs. Thank you for your generosity. Please join in singing number 910, Shepherd of Souls, number 910. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are You, Lord God of all creation, for through Your goodness we have received the wine we offer You, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And may us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 935, Draw Near, number 935.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Just a few brief words before the final blessing. As you may have seen in the news, the very good news that the Archdiocese has come to a settlement with regard to the bankruptcy. Uh, but because of the short notice, it wasn't able to get into the bulletin. So if you want to see more about it next week, uh, there will be a notice from Archbishop Hebda in the bulletin. We ask that you just keep praying for it as this was a very wonderful step forward uh, for healing as well as for justice. Also, please take a look in the bulletin for uh, open adoration hours so that we can fill those hours and keep our chapel open. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Please join in singing number 598, O oh God Beyond All Praising, number 598, verses 1 and 3.